Through our drawing program, we have seen how you can interact with many of the controls that go inside of GUIs. You can set on action uh, event handlers. You can uh, listen for changes on properties. And that works fine for many of the things that you want to do. But every so often there are times when you actually want to directly get input from the keyboard or the mouse. Okay? And we do that in a slightly different way. Also, if you had a touch interface, you, which I don't for, for making these videos, but if you had a touch interface, you might want to get that type of input as well. And this is especially true when you're working with like a canvas because the canvas doesn't have an on action. Now, there are some interesting things that I could put into the drawing program that would use, for example, mouse input so that you could actually click and drag things around. But we're not going to add those here in part because there's overhead and it winds up obfuscating what exactly we want to see. So instead, I'm just going to create a little application that is in a separate package and I'm going to call it keyboard mouse input. so that it's clear what it does, and I can focus just on these capabilities. So I'm going to have this extend JFX app, and we have to do kind of the initial setup that we did originally for our drawing program, which is that we need to set a stage, and this is inside of the JFX app, primary stages, and then inside of here, I might have a title. And I need to set the scene. I'll go with 600 by 600 pixels. Okay, so now we have something that will run as a program. What do I want to do here? Well, really, I just want to have two things that I can move around. One of them I move around with the mouse, and one of them I move around with the keyboard, just so you can see how we would get uh, make things interactive in that way. So I'll also take this opportunity to create, for example, an image, um, because we haven't seen how to do that. There is something that you can add to the scene graph called an image view. And the image view takes a URL. I happen to have a URL in my, let's see if I can remember, www.cs.trinity.edu tilde m lewis vanish gif, I believe is a is a fun little image that that I like to use for certain things. Okay. And let's also just make a little rectangle. A new, no, oh, actually the rectangles in shape, the stuff in the shape library or the shape package does not, they have uh, apply methods. So you don't typically use new with those. And so we'll pull in that. Okay, and I want to just add these to the contents. So the content of our scene is going to be a list of the image and the box of, or sorry, a rectangle. It might actually be nice to have our rectangle pop up as something other than black. Color dot about blue. Okay, just to make sure this works, Let's go ahead and run this so I can find any problems. There we go. Okay, so there's my little banish image, and here is the blue rectangle in there. And what I'd like to have happen is I'd like it so that the, the image follows my mouse around. So that as the mouse moves, it will move along with it. And then I want to make it so that the rectangle is controlled by hitting the arrow keys, up, down, left, right. First, we'll do the mouse. So the scene itself, and it turns out that all of your nodes have methods like on mouse clicked, on mouse dragged, on a whole bunch of mouse stuff. In this case, I want to make it so it follows me everywhere, so I'm going to set on mouse moved. And I do this a lot like on action. 
So I'm going to have a mouse event, which I will use the variable name me. Once again, it's just a variable name. It doesn't matter what I call it. I can import the mouse event. But as with the action events, this is not going to be sufficient. I need that extra import here. So fx dot includes dot underscore. And now this happens, uh, happy. So what do I want to have happen? Well, that mouse event has stuff inside of it, like x and y. So all I need to do here, this is actually very simple code, I just have to have the rectangles x, which is a double property, set it equal to the mouse events x, and the rectangles y set equal to the mouse events y. Let's run this again and you can already see that yes indeed it follows me around. Now note that my mouse pointer is in the top left corner of the rectangle and that is because locations, the xy location of a rectangle is the top left corner and we're just setting it here. If we want it to be centered we could subtract off let's do 0.5 times rect dot width and it's a property so we need to get its value for this to work 0.5 times rect dot height and once again just to make it clear if I don't either call dot value or dot apply this won't be happy and I can choose which one I want to do I leave it up to you to decide which one you prefer uh, in a lot of these videos I've been going with the apply but in many ways the dot value might be more readable and easier for people who aren't used to Scala to work with. So now if I were to run this sure enough my rectangle is kind of centered on the mouse pointer. What about keyboard input? Well just like there are methods for on mouse stuff if I do on K you'll see there's key pressed, key released, and key typed. So key typed works for standard kind of letter keys and whatnot, and it will let you handle the, the characters being typed. Key pressed and key released can be used for any key on the keyboard, and you get kind of corresponding events for them. I want to handle when the key is pressed. We'll see in, in our next round of videos how we can actually go further than this and do things for both the key pressed and the key released. So I have a key event. which I will have to import. And the key event has inside of it a member called code. And that, if this were a key typed, I could actually get like the, the character for it, but I want to respond to the arrow keys. There is no character for, for the arrow keys. So instead I want to get this numeric code. And then there are, there is a class called key code that has inside of it, and technically this is the object key code, that has a whole bunch of constants for all the different types of things that we would want, including up and down and left and right. So if we move up, I want to change the position of image. I want to do img dot y equals img dot y and I need to get the value of it because it's a property. Now for moving up, remember the y coordinate in graphics is flipped, so actually moving up is subtracting from y. How about we move up two pixels, say. Okay, I can actually copy that line, paste it four times, and actually here, let's, we'll stop, I won't make this other change. There's a warning here that we'll have to come back and address, so up, down, left, right, down should alter the y, but it should be addition, left should alter the x, as should right, and they should alter it based upon the x values, left is subtraction, right is addition, and you'll note here there is a warning, it says the match may not be exhaustive, indeed it isn't, Right now, if we were to run this code and I pressed anything other than an arrow key, this code would crash on a match exception because there wouldn't be a case for handling it. 
So I'm going to make a case underscore that does absolutely nothing. So it's just the default that will handle anything that we press and do nothing for those cases. So that again is my mouse moving around and here's my arrow keys moving the image. One thing to note, if I press two at a time, so I held down down and then I hit left, I don't move diagonally. Okay, so this way of taking input has certain limitations. It only handles kind of the most recent key that went down. Uh, we'll see how we can fix that in, uh, in the next round of videos, but this gives you the basic idea of how you can take mouse and keyboard input by writing, by writing handlers for on mouse, whatever it is that you want to do, on key, whatever it is you want to do, just to show it. There's also uh, on drags, oh, on scrolls, on show, on swipe. I believe there's probably an on rotate here. So there's a lot of additional ones on touch that are used for touch interfaces. Uh, for the mouse and the keyboard, everything starts with on mouse, whatever, on key, whatever. Uh, but for the touch interface, there's a whole bunch of different things because there are a number of different gestures that you can do with touch interfaces. But I'm not making these videos on a computer that has touch interface. So I'm not going to go through and show you how to use them. You're more than welcome to play with them on your own.